Now you should have three subtools that have colorize on. So they have, they're not relying on the texture map in order to hold the texture information. Now the reason we did this is because we're going to project the colorize information onto another object. And oftentimes the texture map will not project as precise as a colorize uh, will project. So we just baked everything into the mesh. Next we're going to generate a quick resolution model to kind of engulf the stump here. And to do that I'm going to use uh, z-spheres and do a retopology. Now the purpose of the retopology I'm going to do here is not to give me an exact low resolution model but just to give me enough density, even density, across the object so that I can decimate it later to get the low resolution model. So to do this I'm going to just append a z-sphere to the scene. So just click the append button and then pick the z-sphere. And the z-sphere will come in something like this. So I'm going to go select it and I'm just going to simply go to scale up at top and scale it down a little bit and then move it so it's actually underneath the stump. I just don't want it you know, visible while I'm creating the geometry. I'm going to go down to the bottom here and turn on topology and hit edit topology. So now I am in topology mode with the z-sphere and I am able to actually generate topology on the surface of the model. For this one I really just want quadded evenly spaced kind of topology across the surface. Don't really care how it looks, I just kind of want it evenly spaced. And that's going to be the biggest deal, that uh, biggest thing I want out of this. So I'm just going to hit come here, make sure draw mode is on, and just click, click. I'm just going to make squares from the surface here. This is just me simply clicking with the Wacom tablet. And I'm holding control. So I'll hold control to start, which sets my start point. And then I'll draw off of that. And wherever this red circle is, is where your next one's going to draw from. So you want to keep that in mind when you're drawing. Now, I'm not going to put anything in these negative space spots here because I don't want the geometry really sinking down that much. I'm just kind of like boxing them in. And then I'm just going to keep making these quads around the model here. Now if you get to something kind of like this, just make sure it's quad. Don't want any triangles in this part right now. So this one I'm going to have to split out too, because it's all off. And this doesn't have to be precise. This is just literally to give us a cleaner mesh that we can project to. It's not going to be your final mesh that's going to go in game. If you wanted to spend the time now and make it your final mesh, you could, but um, the decimation that, is, that I'm going to do next will take care of a lot of that for you and save you a lot of time in the long run. So there we have our top. I'm just going to rotate this down a little bit and just going to go and plot these out along the bottom here. This mesh did generate a lot of excess stuff along the edges, as you can see. I could have trimmed those out inside the photo scene editor, inside of uh, the Autodesk photo scene editor. But I decided to keep them, and because it's easier for me just to not project that area inside a ZBrush. So as I create this topology here, I'm just going around in a circle and just applying this geo. I'm not going to go fully out to the edge of the border here. I'm just going to keep relative to where the actual stump is. Now if you miss a point on any one of these, I uh, just say undo and then just redraw it. There is a slide feature inside ZBrush where you can reslide a point or kind of intersect it with uh, existing uh, Z-sphere topology. But it often only slides on the surface between the two points rather on the surface of the model. So if you want a more precise mesh out of it, make sure you just redraw the point. It doesn't take that much longer and it gives you a uh, cleaner result in the long run. So we're almost done here. Oh, you can see here I messed up here, so I'm just going to hold Alt and click and just erase that, and then hold Control to get my new start point, and then just redraw. Now I do want this tree trunk kind of part here, so I'm going to bring these out and down a little bit more, so I can actually get part of that into the mesh. I do want that kind of detail. That one's going to give me an ugly quad. Here's another missed point. I may have two missed points there. No. Okay.
Once again, this is not my final low resolution mesh, so I just want to get enough geo that kind of engulfs the actual area of the uh, stump that I want. So that's roughly where I want the stump. I'm actually going to bring these two points out a little bit more to kind of get them out here. So that gives me that little kind of trailing edge. And I'm actually going to move these two down. So I'm just holding Alt and clicking where I don't want these points to be anymore and then just redrawing them again. So now I roughly have, you know, something like this. So now I want to turn this into a mesh so I can project on it. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go to Adaptive Skin over here and turn the density to 1 and then hit Make Adaptive Skin. What that's doing is it's going to take the ZSP geometry and generate a skin mesh out of it. So it's giving you topology for that. Now, if you notice something funky on this or something that looks funny, like say like you missed a point or the edge didn't you know, quite seal together or you found a quad or a triangle that you didn't like, if you go back into the Z-sphere here, since you appended the Z-sphere, you can now hit solo. And so you can actually see the cage that's been generated. So you can see right here I have one point that was you know off-clicked and didn't get a helper or a, uh, another line assigned to it. So I'm just going to hold Alt and remove that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and recreate this uh, adaptive skin. So just hit adapt, make adaptive skin again. And now I should have a updated one. That little point wasn't going to harm much, but it's updated now. So I'm going to go back onto the tool that has the stumps and the z-sphere. I'm first going to delete the z-sphere because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to append the skin. So now you can see I have my adaptive skin mesh that I created from the spheres. That's tools with all the other stump meshes. So you can see it's just kind of like floating over top of it. It's making it pretty much a cage. Now I could take this low res mesh and export it out and then process the scene into with something like X normal in order to get normals and stuff generated from it. But since this mesh is pretty clean and the roots don't really have any holes in them, I'm just going to do a project right here. So to do that first, I'm going to take this skin Z sphere here. I'm just going to divide this up. Now I want this somewhere close to a million polygons, so I'm going to have to divide it quite a bit. So I'm at 1.3 million polygons, which should give me enough resolution to handle the colorize options, or colorize that's actually on the high-res tree stumps and the detail that's on the high-res tree stump. If I actually extended this surface out further around the ring and I wanted a larger area, you'd have to subdivide it a little bit more or increase the polygon count a little bit more so you get that resolution that's needed to transfer the uh, projection. So now that I have that, I'm going to simply project all. Now, majority of the time, this feature works perfectly right out the uh, gate. If it doesn't work, there's this projection shell slider here. And what that does is if you hold it and move it, you can see it's actually showing you how the projection or what range the projection will happen from. So if I really wanted to be, you know, 100% sure, I'd bring it up to probably about here so that it would engulf the entire tree trunk. But it should be okay at zero, so I'm just going to leave it for right now. Now this next step does take a little while sometimes, uh, depending on how many millions of polygons your actual items are. So ZBrush may look like it hangs, but oftentimes it's not hanging, so just let it go and then uh, come back. So I'm going to hit project all, and then I'm going to pause the video, and uh, I'll be back when it's ready. So your projection should have stopped, and you should have something that looks like this. And if I hit solo, you can see here is my low resolution geometry tree trunk with the details from the high one projected on it. So you can see, if I turn polyframe on and I scroll up and down, you can see it's actually the low geometry, but with the details from the high one. So you can delete these other stumps now if you want, but I'm just going to keep them in this scene uh, for now. That's basically it for the projection stuff. Um, we have our mesh now. Now the next step is to get this mesh into a usable form inside the game engine. Now from here we could just use this cage that we've generated. It's decent. It's not anything special, but it doesn't really fit the form of the geometry. 
what we're going to do instead is actually decimate this mesh and give us a cage that's a little bit more precise to the actual structure of the trunk. To start that off, we're first going to go to the lowest resolution of the uh, projected mesh. And we're going to go to the Z plugin up in top and choose UV Master. Now we're doing this so we generate some UVs for the actual mesh. So we're just going to make sure symmetry's on and hit unwrap. And then we're going to slide back up. Go down to texture and do new from polypaint. And you should see your tree trunk object is now unwrapped and has all that detail that was in the color eyes baked into a map. Now we baked it into a map because when we decimate the mesh, there's not going to be those millions and millions of polygons in order to handle the colorized information. So when we end up with a game resolution model, we're actually going to have them have a map to go with it rather than rely on the individual uh, vertices of the model to colorize the object. So the next thing we need to do is go up to Z plugin and choose Decimation Master. Here we're going to make sure Keep UVs is turned on and we're going to hit Pre-Process Current. So what's this going to do? It's going to keep the UVs that are on the high resolution mesh and then pre-process it so it can be decimated. So we're just going to hit that. The little bar up here should process. Shouldn't take too long with a uh, 1.5 million uh, polygon model. So now it should be pre-processed. Go back up to Z plugin. And here there's a polys and points. So say our game engine wants you know, 1,000 polygons for this tree truck. So we're going to come here, we're going to put 1K in and hit enter. Make sure you hit enter. Oftentimes, the just sliding it will not register it fully. And so if you hit decimate, you may not get the result you want. And then we're going to hit decimate current. And so what this did was it just decimated that entire mesh into this low resolution cage. Since it's triangles, it's not really a big deal. I and mean, most game engines convert all the polygons to triangles anyway. So that's perfectly fine. Our mapping works with it. And so you can kind of rotate around, and if we turn on flat color, you'll see a better representation of the actual mesh. See, that looks pretty good. I turn off polyframe. It's got all the details from the photographs, and it's low enough resolution to be ran into a game. Now, if you want this to be a little bit higher, or maybe you, you know, want it a little bit lower, Go, go back up to the Z plugin thing, go to Decimation Master, and you don't have to pre-process it right now because you already did that. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to type in a new number. So say you want a 10K uh, tree trunk, so we're going to hit 10 and hit Enter. Then we're going to hit Decimate Current again. And so now it has increased the resolution to 10K based on your first pre-process and applied it to the mesh. So now we have our trunk with uh, 10K worth of uh, polygon. And so you can just keep doing this over and over again until uh, you find what resolution you want. After you're done, just hit a clone texture. And I'll throw the texture up top here. Export that out. And then export out your uh, model into an OBJ. I've done quite a few things with uh, just taking these pictures so far. I can show you some quick examples. Here we have a stone wall. This is just in my backyard. Um, I did it one summer to correspond with my pawn that actually sits over here. As you can see, it's just taken with a bunch of photos. I think this one was 30 photos, and it's all just stitched together. Let's see what it's like without the texture map. I can turn that off quick. So you can see it actually gets pretty good detail across the model. And then with the actual you know texture applied to it, it's pretty awesome. And this roughly took me you know 15, 30 minutes to generate this entire section. And to retopologize it and clean it up, uh, you're talking about an hour for you know an entire stone wall, which is pretty awesome. The other one I want to show, this is one of my uh, coworkers, so we've been messing with this kind of testing stuff too. This was done just by taking photographs from right to left. As you can see, this program does an excellent job at getting text resolution and details in diffused textures. So it took all those images that I took, I think this one was 10 or 12 images, and it stitched them together perfectly. Now, I could have taken more images to go around the back of the head and under the chin, so these are just like the first test ones I was messing with. Anyhow, that's it. So um, if you have any questions, there should be a link to my email underneath this video. I'll try to help answer anything that uh, comes up. So thanks for taking the time to watch the video.